This is Duke University. I think I've shown you that um, there's enormous challenges to effective service delivery. Um, but also that from the evidence that I've presented, that the current interve interventions, if they can get to, to scale, are able to dramatically impact on health. We are able to prevent increases in mortality that would occur without the interventions. And if we get to even greater scale, we're able to even reverse some of the increases that have happened over, the, over prior years. And that we at a particularly interesting time politically in that we have a new health minister, we have no obvious barriers, uh, and we have a climate of cooperation that, that um, is fairly unique in our experience of the last, of the last decade and provides very unique opportunities. Uh, it's a climate that's uh, not backed up by financial commitment, um, is undermined a little bit by uncertainty as to the future, and it's also led to civil society being less vocal about deficiencies in the system. In terms of uh, case HIV serology, they, they, we probably have less uh, of the causative virus than, than we thought we had. Um, but the NCI have actually asked us to, to look at HIV-associated cancers, and we just don't have the data. We're diagnosing much more cervical cancer, but then we have a cohort of women who are getting annual pap smears in the context where women never used to get pap smears. One thing about the treatment model is that I actually think it's fairly uniform. Mm -hmm. um, it's based on a, a strong component of patient preparation. Some, some services do it as kind of group counseling. Uh, some services focus more on individual counseling, but the idea of patient preparation and, and adherence support is fairly ingrained. Um, the national protocol in terms of what clinical interventions are, are delivered, when patients are eligible, when they get CD4 count and viral load monitoring, safety bloods, is fairly consistent nationally. Um, if there are differences, it's got to do with the extent to which uh, different health workers provide clinical consultations. Um, my general feeling, and uh, there's other South Africans here who might want to might want to respond, is that people who have poor access to health because of whatever vulnerabilities similarly will have poor access to HIV services. Um, given the elections that are going to happen in three weeks a month, and the fact that uh, Jacob Zuma is kind of the um, projected winner of the next presidential elections, um, how do you think that will change HIV AIDS treatment and the attitudes towards it? I mean, we heard a lot about his HIV AIDS scandal, I guess. Um, so I was wondering if you think that will have an impact. Yeah. I, I don't think we know. I think it's part of that uncertainty that, that I described. In many ways, he's not somebody who's going to actively uh, stand in the way of pragmatic program responses. But I also, I think many people also doubt whether he has the motivation to to lead a complete sea change in how, how we respond to HIV. Um, it's more likely that he'll, his biggest impact on how things change will probably be in who he chooses to provide the leadership at ministry level. Produced by Duke University, online at duke.edu.